Hey guys, welcome to Musky Road Rules Podcast, episode number 225. Guys, thanks for listening, thanks for telling a friend, and uh, thanks for uh, tuning in with us every week here. Tonight's podcast is brought to you by Musky Innovations. Guys, they have been making baits all the way since 1992 and really were the first people to push soft plastic lures. I know there were a few before that, but they were the ones that really took off i know you heard steve herbeck on here last week we were talking a little bit about the uh the bulldog and when it first came out and how revolutionary it was for him and and pretty much all the fisheries but if you want to check them out go to muskyinnovations.com again like i said makers of the bulldog the shallow invader which i think has become just as popular and now with the swim baits check out the swimming dogs made in a bunch of different sizes all kinds of colors and the dying dog jerk baits the ripping dog there's tons of stuff there check them out at musky with a y musky innovations.com also i want you to shoot us a text on the text line at 606-776-6570 that's the lungeon lures text line guys lungeon lures makers of the 22 short 22 long 22 ss the alley cat series of lures the chubby the big 50 cal they've got a ton of crankbaits out there made right here in the u.s uh, and also the spinners they've got the original lungeon tail dc9 <coughs> dc10 and nutbuster spinner baits check them out at lungeonlures.com and text us at 606-776-6570 guys on the line right now i got jason jackson from over in west virginia and tim smith up in ohio who are going to be speakers at the musky road rules event in wilmington this weekend wilmington ohio guys how you doing good how are you oh i'm doing uh hey. doing well everything uh how's uh you know for guys up north you know i'm sitting down here and and you know you guys are too it's uh it's been some really nice days this week it was been <laughs> over 50 hell it was close to 70 down here yesterday and i think it's supposed to be back that way tomorrow yeah the weather's been great uh, we got uh got out and fished on sunday and um uh, Water temperature was like 40.3, but it was uh, mid-60s that day, and um, we, uh, we've we got some, some opportunities to fish down here now. Yeah, it's been nice. Uh, Tim, is anybody fishing in Ohio now, or is there is, is uh, We have a skim of ice on right now, which should be gone here in a few days. Where, uh, Tim, where are you at in Ohio? I am uh, south of Youngstown, Ohio, a little tiny town called Rogers. Okay, I know. Uh, I know. Guys are fishing some on Caesar's Creek um, there in the Cincinnati area, just north right. of Cincinnati Dayton area. Right. And I guess Caesar's has uh, been producing fish. It was the uh, the guy, one of the guys that came to the Ohio Muskie Show, went fishing the morning before he came to the show and caught two fish. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's pretty um, pretty crazy. Now, Tim, I met you fishing the PMTT. Um, it's been uh, how long have you fished on the PMTT? I do believe this will be my seventh year. Seventh year doing it. What uh, mm -hmm. what got you into musky fishing? Uh Rick Simpson. Well, pass the blame on to your partner. That's what I always yeah. do. Yeah, <laughs> my uh, PMTT partner. He used to live a couple miles from me, and uh, he had to take a job in Iowa, so he moved to Iowa. So we just get together at uh, on the tournament trail. Okay. How was your uh, when you first started musky fishing? Where was it in Ohio or? or oh yeah. Where did yes. you get going yep. at it? Yep. Uh, probably the Leesville Lake and Piedmont Lake. Okay. Now those lakes. When was that? When did you first uh, start? Oh, geez, that's probably ooh, fifteen, sixteen years ago. Yeah. Now, have you noticed? <coughs> And it, uh, an improvement, a you know, has, has it changed much since you started? Oh, I think it's an improvement. Yeah, I've been uh, yeah, I've yeah, been hearing yeah. uh, hearing that, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, you're going to be talking about at Road Rules. Tell us a little bit about the stocking that goes on there in Ohio. Oh, I tell you what, I think probably Ohio's got one of the best stocking programs in the in the country. But the, the only thing about it is they only do nine program lakes. Okay. In Ohio. Uh, and they uh, they put uh, one fish per acre of uh, water. 
Well, that's pretty good. A lot of lakes don't do that. Right. So if you got a 3,000 acre lake, you get 3,000 muskies, and that's every single year. Wow. That's now. Are they? Are these fish? Uh, are they being raised in Ohio? And, oh yes, yes. So, so these yep. are these are native fish. Is this a native strain, or because these lakes weren't were they natural lakes, or were they introduced? Oh, uh, introduced. Okay, and then yeah, where, the, where, where uh, did they get introduced from? Where did these fish come from? Uh, the 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 uh, program now they come from Leesville Lake. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, they they used to do it at Clear Fork, but uh, they got the disease out there. So they switched, and now uh, all of them are, come from uh, Leesville. Yeah, didn't they? They got red spot, didn't they? In there, or? right, right. Yep. Yeah, that's what I had. Uh, that's what I had heard that Clear Fork had had some stuff uh, yeah. going yeah. on. What is the you know in Ohio there? You know, I always thought it was kind of a a crazy deal. Now, do you guys have a size limit now? Oh no, no. Oh. See, that's amazing to me. Is there's no, no. size limit? <laughs> no, and it's uh, there, there's there's quite a few of them taken out, believe it or not. Oh, I'm sure there is. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it's it, there's got to be. I, that's but that's always blown me away that, that that there was no size limit in Ohio, and you guys have such a really good fishery. But I think a lot <laughs> of it comes down to just you're putting so many fish in there. Um, yes. Yep. And yeah. how's the How's the size? Are you seeing much? Uh, how's the size of fish that's coming out of there now? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, we are starting to see larger larger muskies. Mm. We're getting more in, in the 50-inch class, you know, high 40s, 49, 48. Uh, uh, we're getting yeah, – they're, they're catching quite a few of them now. Yeah. Has it uh, – with that, do you think it's just – you know, do you think it's the fisheries are getting better, more guys doing it? Um, what do you, what can you attribute that to? Uh, well, uh, all the diehard fishermen, uh, it's all catch and release. Gotcha. You know, you got the local the farmers and stuff like that that take them out, but uh, all the all the dedicated musky fishermen, all it is is catch and release. Sure, sure. Well, I can get that. I remember I did a show up in, God, it was somewhere way up in Ohio. And uh, I was shocked at the number of Amish fishermen yes. Yes. That, I, that I ran into. <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> uh, it, it, I was. Uh, I was. Uh, I was blown away by the number of uh, of Amish people I come and I and and I. You know, the, 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 I'm not stereotyping, but if it's like it is down here, that's not a big catch and release uh, uh, group. All right. It used to be incidental catches, you know, when they were fishing crappies and bluegills and walleyes and stuff. But now they are targeting with them, so uh, that makes it a little different situation. Well, they, at least they got big hats. They shouldn't get sunburned. I mean, they're <laughs> yeah, really. they're definitely ready to go there. Uh, really? What about you, Jason? You got a lot of Amish musky fishermen there in Huntington? No, we just have rednecks. Just straight up <laughs> rednecks. <laughs> yeah. We have- rednecks and hillbillies and um i think the the problem we have in our area is just it comes down to education and sure um old myths grandpa said that the muskies eat all the bass and they still believe what grandpa said and we we have a pretty big problem ourselves as far as um you know we've got bass clubs that are openly telling us that they're they're <laughs> They're stabbing the muskies both side and letting them let them sink. And we have a we have a pretty big culture problem on the lower end of the state. Now, up on the northern end of the state, I think it's a little better around um, you know the Stonewall area, Burnsville area, those kind of fisheries. They, they've got it a little better, I think, uh, than we do on the southern end of of West Virginia. It's, it's kind of just uh, demographics the area we, we live in and sure oh i know the i know the deal i mean it's it's one of those uh it's just one of those things i did see a nice uh uh a netflix documentary in your area talking about uh the opioids based in huntington west virginia that was <laughs> that was a really uh that was a, i didn't see any uh i didn't see any potential musky fishermen on that but uh, I was look. I didn't see you either, so that was good. I was happy. To, yeah. <laughs> I was happy to see that. Yeah, uh, I think it was called Heroin E. Was the uh, 
the documentary you might be talking about. Oh yes. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's uh yeah, that's right here in my backyard of Huntington. Jeez. That's a, uh, that that's a, that always is good. That always is a good thing when you have the heroin documentary being based in your uh that's good for tourism. Yeah, I mean nothing raises your spirits like when you're driving to work and you gotta dodge zombies all the way in. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that up you don't have that up there, uh, Tim and uh in the big city where you're at? Uh we we have a little bit of it, but nothing uh Nothing major. Nothing major. Documentary worthy. Documentary worthy. What uh, now, Jason? You're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some crankbait stuff and river stuff. But how did you, you know, how did you get started musky fishing over there in in uh, in your area? Um, Actually, you know, I was never really a fisher. My uh, my dad, he did a lot of uh, professional bass fishing and. He would take us, he got burnt out, and he would take us when we were kids trout fishing in the mountains. But I was really more of a hunter than I was a fisherman. I, I liked to bow hunt. And the guys that I used to bow hunt with got it, were into muskie fishing. And about 1996 was the year I started my first uh, <laughs> trips to Cave Run. And... Um, just, you know, friends that I bow hunted with wanted me to go with them and try this out. And they showed me pictures of Tony Grant holding up muskies. And, oh, that's quite a picture. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> looks like Ron Jeremy holding up a muskie. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a good looking man. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, uh, you know, but in your area, it's a lot of, uh, of creeks and streams. Um, there I know, and and I actually, me and Nathan went over there and fished one last year with you there right before uh, we came north at, <coughs> in June. Um, is that something that you'd been, you know, doing quite a bit of as well? Yeah. Um, the higher the gas prices get, the more I stay close to home. I understand. Uh, you know, I I used to travel all over the country looking for fish, and then, um, you know, back when it was a dollar thirty seven a gallon i didn't care to go all the way to the st lawrence but uh the higher it gets the closer i stay stay to the house and um so my options if i'm gonna stay close are just small rivers small creeks um there i've always been native in these creeks and we have a lot of uh, the ohio river strand that will come up out of the ohio and enter into these creeks and, uh, you know, occasionally we, f- we find some good fish. Um, occasionally we'll run into a, a really nice one. And, and then sometimes we're limited by size, I think, to the just to the, the size of the creek or the size of the body of water. Yeah, but, I mean, those creeks are pretty cool to fish. I mean, doing the jumbo thing, drifting down there. I mean, it's – I mean, you're dealing <laughs> with fish in some pretty skinny water sometimes. Yeah, it's uh, – there's nothing like it. Usually you get to see the eat. Um, cause a lot of times you're, you know, six foot holes, deep water. Sure. So, uh, so a lot of times you're casting into three feet or less and you'll get to see them eat. And it's always interesting to wrestle them around a log jam or bicycle frame or tire, or whatever. <laughs> car hood. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some of the, uh, some of the scenic beauty of the West Virginia streams. Why well, hell Kentucky streams are not just, they're, they're just as bad. Um, you know, don't take out your dark, you know, instead of taking your trash to the dump, you just throw it over the hill, uh, is the, is, is pretty typical. Uh, Tim, have you ever done that? You done any creek fishing at all? Uh, no, we, uh, very, very few creeks up here that have any muskies in them. Uh, basically the only ones are the ones that drain into the higher river. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's probably from, from where I live, uh, I live right on the Pennsylvania border from here down as far as I know of it. There's probably only maybe a dozen cricks that come in that might have muskies in them. Okay. Uh, I didn't know if there was many or, or not. I know, uh, there's, I've always heard of one and I don't even know where it's at in Ohio, the Scioto brush. Yes. Yep. Where's that and, one and, and, That'd be south. Okay. South a couple hours, and there's the Musk Kingdom. Uh, it, it, it has quite a few. 
What uh, and, uh, now? Didn't now, Tim? You're in the the Ohio Husky Musky Club, aren't you? Right. Yes. Now <clears throat> that got founded. Jesus, how long ago did that thing get founded? Because I think Doug Grisso from Grim Reaper was one of the first guys to do it, wasn't he? Uh, it was founded in 1961. Oh wow. Okay. It is the second oldest musky club in the United States. Yeah, you weren't at the first meeting, were you? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That uh, that I was going to say because I think it's it, Bill's Musky Club, that one, and then I don't even know if the Kentucky Silver Musky Club's still around, but we were the we were right there. Um, I think we were the third oldest because it was started yeah. back in the early '60s as well. Um, yeah. Tell a little bit about the Husky Musky Club, kind of how it uh, how it came about, and if you know much about the history. Yeah, it was uh, it was formed by the uh, ODNR of Ohio. Uh, they started in like 1958 to uh, stock some lakes uh, with muskies in their stocking program back there, which they didn't know that much about it. Sure, uh, didn't work, and then he finally in the 60s, early 60s, there they started. Uh, getting some more information and learning how to raise the muskies up. So it, it was formed by the ODNR to keep uh, track on the muskies that they were stalking. Okay. Um, that, uh, now when they, what were some of the first lakes that they stock with muskies in Ohio? Uh, uh, Piedmont, Leesville, uh, Clear Fork. I think those were the, some of the earliest ones that they stocked. Now, do they still stock them? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think yeah, they 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 dropped one lake uh, a couple of years ago, and it weren't producing. They weren't getting any results out of the lake. Uh, they didn't know whether the <clears throat> muskies were going through the dam or the outlet. The bass were uh, so they yeah they dis discontinued that lake, and then they they started up another lake. Okay, what yeah. lake was that? They discontinued. Uh, uh, East Fork. East Fork. Okay. It is down close to uh, Caesar's Creek. Oh, okay. Well, that's the reason I didn't yeah. catch any out there. Uh, yeah. Did you go there? No. No. Oh. But that would probably. <laughs> I, in Wisconsin, one time I was fishing, and this was back a long time ago. This was back in the the late nineties, and uh, somebody said, "Well, you need to go fish Sand Lake." I go, "Okay." That's got big muskies in it. I go, okay, I'll go to Sand Lake. Well, I got a map, and I'm like, oh, there's Sand Lake. Well, I didn't know there was like 136 Sand Lakes in Wisconsin. And uh, I went and fished all day on the one that didn't have muskies in it. And uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, that one was a that one was a rough one. Yeah, it's hard to catch them if they're not in there. Yeah, yeah. I just thought I had a bad day. But uh, Tim, let's talk about the. Uh, the PMT here a little bit. You've been, you and Rick have been fishing it and done pretty well over the years. Yes. Um, yep, yep. We've had some pretty good luck. Yeah. Now, you guys, did you guys get second last year here at Cave Run? Uh, no, we, we took third. Got third. Okay. We, get, uh, we took third. You yeah. guys were in first, the lead the first day, though, right? Or Yeah. First first day we were number one, and then uh, second day we didn't catch any, and uh, we dropped the third. Yeah. What's it like? Uh, how's that night going into the to the last uh, into Sunday in the lead? You a little nervous? Yes, all day long, <laughs> <laughs> and especially, especially when you don't see anything. Oh yeah, the second day. I know the mm-hmm. I know the feeling. We, uh, uh, me and Tony, the one we won down here, uh, we caught the two fish the first day. It didn't do anything the second day. So uh, I know all about that. I know how it can be. Uh, how those second, how long those, that, uh, that five hours or, or six hours can yeah, be on, yeah. uh, on Sunday, um, when it's, uh, when it's like that, uh, what other yeah. lakes, uh, you know, you'll fish in the PMT last seven years. What's been your favorite, uh, your favorite lake to go to? Uh, I would probably have to say Eagle river. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, it, to me. I think Eagle River is more. And Jason, you came up there this year. Um, yeah. it, I just think it's just it's just pretty. It's like musky fishing, kind of the, what you you think about. It. It's North Woods. Um, it's uh, just kind of that whole mystique. The whole area has something to do with musky fishing. Um, 
I think that's just a really, really neat thing. Um, and you guys have done good up there on Eagle River. Yeah, yeah, we've done real good up there. What, uh, what's what been – so, like, on that term, we're not even going there this year. Uh, no, no, that surprised me. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know what happened. I don't know if they didn't renew the contract or or what it was. But uh, have you ever been to Madison Chain? No, I have not. Uh, Rick fished it uh, uh, with Paul Anderson uh, before I, I became his partner. But he's been there. Yeah, it's a uh, – yeah, I mean the Madison Chain's a good fishery. Don't get me, and there's some really nice fish in it. It's just so met, you know. It's it's very metro. Um, yes, you know, yes, it's I a super that. urban lake, and uh, yeah, you don't see as many eagles flying around. Um, <laughs> you will get flipped off, but not as many oh, really? eagles. Yeah, huh. it's <laughs> that's usually the way it, <laughs> way it goes. Eagle River. <laughs> w- what was your uh, when you guys were there? What was kind of the uh, you know, how were you guys getting your fish? You know, what did you find to be the most consistent? I've always done better there trolling. Um, but what was your all's kind of, uh, go to, uh, I would say, uh, uh, top water and bucktails. The good old traditional stuff. Yeah. The one, the one year, all they wanted, as far as I knew, was top water. And we, we did good that year up there. Yeah. Um, is that kind of similar to the way you fish in Ohio or no? Uh, no, I'll tell you, I have, uh, pounded the water down here in Ohio and, and, and uh, I have yet to catch one on top water in Ohio. Oh, no shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. what, uh, do you think fishing the PMTTs made you kind of opened your eyes to some of the musky fishing or made you a little oh, better? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It, uh, it makes you humble. I can, I can tell you that. Oh, me and Jason know about that. <laughs> me and Jason know all about that. <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> we uh, we didn't. How did you guys do at uh, the championship last year? Uh at the championship, I was the first one on Friday to turn in a muskie. <laughs> nice, nice. And uh, uh, going into Sunday, uh, me and Rick was in fifth place, and there was one fish caught on Sunday. Yeah, I remember that. And, it was not by us because we were both driving home. Uh, it, knocked, it knocked us out of uh, fifth place into sixth place, and they only paid the top five, so we didn't get nothing. The bridesmaid and never a bride. <laughs> really? What uh, What were you getting fish on there at, at the championship? Uh, bucktails. Bucktails again. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, yep. uh, that's cool. What uh, in a, Your seminar this weekend, what... Uh, what are you going to be? What are you going to be talking about to the guys that come? I know we've got several guys. It looks like that are planning on coming this weekend. It's going to be at the, um, <coughs> excuse me, American Legion there in Wilmington, Ohio, post forty nine. Uh, what uh, What are you planning on talking about there? Uh, Ohio Lakes. Okay. All yep, the... I'll give them, you know all the stocking stuff and all the information. How many acres? Uh, give them a general, you know, what, what the lakes, what the lakes are like. Sure. And then, and then, uh, if anybody's going to want any information on the PMTT, I can, uh, I can do that. Sure. What those lakes in Ohio, is there any of them that you like more than others or? Uh, my two favorites, Leesville and Piedmont. Leesville and Piedmont. I've heard good things about both of them. I've never been to yeah. them. Um, yep. I've heard that there's a lot of muskies in there for one. Yes. Uh, yes. and yep. I, you know, I always heard of Piedmont of having some really nice fish in it. Oh, they got some absolute monsters in there. Yeah. I'd, uh, I'd heard yep. that. Jason, have you went over to Ohio and fish much? Yeah. Me and, uh, <clears throat> me and Sonny took a, took a week in the summer a few years ago and we did uh salt fork, mm-hmm. uh, clear, clear fork. Clear fork. Yep. And uh, Leesville. Yes. I yep. have never been to Piedmont or Milton. Um, so those, those are two that I have not got to fish. Uh, we did we did well. We caught on all every lake we visited. and uh, Good. We really enjoyed it. I think that uh, Clear Fork's beautiful. I mean, it, it was kind of you know, cool with, like, the reeds and the islands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we don't have really a lot of islands in our reservoirs down here. Little little spots it kind of felt like we were up north a little bit um and it was pretty but the uh it was summertime so we we had you know some 
some pleasure boaters out there made it interesting. Uh, but we caught off the islands and off the reeds and good. Then Salt Fork, we just it's deep, so yeah. we fished um, Salt Fork like we do at home, um, targeting main lake laydowns, and we found like turns in the in the lake, and we would find laydowns and we'd fish the laydowns, and we uh, we caught some fish doing that. Just I'm good. But uh, I really really like Ohio's program. Where Tim? Where's the hatchery at? Oh boy, you'd have to ask it, wouldn't you? Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll have that information uh, Saturday. <laughs> the reason I was that, there was an old hatchery that I don't think is in use anymore, and if I could be wrong about that, but it's down here in southern Ohio behind Portsmouth. Um, the, you know, from what I hear from the old guys like Ray Hensley and Speed Jones was that that hatchery, they would take the brood stock and just dump them when out back into Scioto Brush Creek. Um, and that's how the fish in Scioto Brush got so so big and became such a good strain in that creek was it was all brood stock getting dumped. Mm-hmm. But I think that hatchery has since been closed. But I don't. Uh, and I know that we have two, two hatcheries that do muskies. Okay. Now, have you guys ever um, in Ohio, Tim? Have you and because other states have done it, ever like bought any fish from like uh, any no. of the other states or anything like that? No. No. Uh, well, two years ago when COVID was on, uh, Ohio didn't get their muskies uh, because of COVID. They wouldn't let them go get you know get the eggs and stuff. And uh, we got them off of Pennsylvania. They had an excess amount. So we that one year we got the. Uh, we got the minis off of uh, uh, Pennsylvania, and then took them to our hatchery and raised them. Oh, that's cool. Now, let me. You're talking about the the minnows and stuff. Now, you know, at the Ohio, I mean, not the minnows, the bait, the muskies. The, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, the yeah. small ones. Um, yeah, right. Now, at the Ohio Muskie Show on Saturday evening every year, we always have the Mike Money Minnow Fund, um, right? And that is to help feed those fish, right? Right. How uh, how does do you know much about that? How that works? Well, uh, it's for the minis to feed the muskies, and it's any any kind of equipment or anything that they want for the hatchery. Uh you know Elmer Hayob. Yeah, uh, used to be involved in it, <clears throat> and if the hatchery or something needed a pump, you know we'd buy a pump for them. If they needed chemicals to clean the ponds and stuff like that, we'd buy them. Uh, buy them the chemicals and everything like that. They call it the minnow fund. Yeah. Which which they do purchase minnows with it, but it's kind of whatever request they want. Sure. I mean, I you know, I, I see I love that. I wish, you know, the um Kentucky Fish and Wildlife would do that, but they they won't. They don't accept outside donations. Oh, um, really? Oh. No, it goes into a general fund. And um you know, you could donate money, but it it might go to fix a bridge in, you know, in Paducah. Um, it, really? It's nothing yeah. is earmarked or anything like that, and I just I've always found that to be kind of counterproductive. Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and he, pretty frustrating. And any of this money is dedicated to the muskies. Yeah, see that's see that's awesome. I think that's great for you know, especially you know, because let's face it, musky fishermen is is a very small group, right. um, of people. But you know, at the same time, I mean, we spend quite a bit of money. I mean, anybody goes to a sports show or uh, tries to get into this right now. I mean, it ain't a cheap sport. No, um, it's not by any yeah. means to get into, and you know, it, <coughs> you know, I know that that is definitely something that. Um, people can, you know, you know, donating money to more people are more apt to donate money to something they like. And, right. and, and if it's going to help the fisheries, you know, I know a lot of guys that would be willing to donate a little money if it meant it was going to help, you know, fix the, you know, you know, create better stocking or, uh, anything like that, which I think that's a huge, uh, a huge, huge deal. Jason, right. do they stock much in West Virginia where you're at? Uh, we've had, we've had some, some rough years. Um, West Virginia, you know, we do our own hatchery and our own stocking. And if we have a bad year, 
of low productivity from the from the hatchery um they haven't been too big on going and and supplementing that with out-of-state purchases so we get um we get what we get out of the hatchery that's the same thing we get here i mean it's exactly what we got you know one thing that they said at the mike minnow money fund raffle that i thought was super cool was they're going to switch the the forage in the hatchery for the muskies Mm -hmm. Uh, they're now going to give them goldfish and Uh everybody uh, start buying orange lures Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that definitely might change uh, you know, uh, the bait collar in Ohio. The hot bait collar. <laughs> what did they feed them before? Is minnows, wasn't it? Yeah, chartreuse so they, and black polka dotted minnows. Yep. That's why they yep. like that color. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, they they the last few years they've really been having trouble getting the minis and the price is just getting ridiculous sure so they were they're, they're going to raise them carp fry uh and try to raise them themselves they're gonna, so they don't have to so they don't have to out, outside purchase them they're going to raise the goldfish right okay yeah yeah they're, right they're not going to go to the walmart and say i need uh I well, they might, but uh, <laughs> a bunch of <laughs> poor old feller at Walmart that, back there with a scoop got sweat on him, putting about thirty five thousand pound of goldfish in a bag. Yeah, that, that would have to be on the sly. <laughs> yeah, that would have to be on, out the back door. Uh, right. The black market uh, goldfish trade. Um, what, uh, Jason? Over by uh, by you now. You're gonna. You know, you guys get to fish winter, you know, we down here, but you and, and Sonny, I know, take advantage of the winter months uh, quite a bit. And uh, you're going to talk about the, you know, some of the soft plastic stuff. And I know, you know, as a as a road rule sponsor, the, the salt eels have just been great for you guys. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about them. Um, in my 20 years of fishing, I think as far as rubber baits are concerned, I've caught in the last three years, more fish on a salty than I have. Um, they're just a great bait. Uh, they're, they look alive in the water. He's got his pour on the rubber to where they're they're really soft. Um, and I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, you could probably stiffen that pour up to make them more harder rubber and more durable. But I'm glad to uh, keep replacing baits if they keep catching fish. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, for they, guys that don't know, Jason, kind of give, kind of explain what that bait is. Um, it's got a, just a a real flat bottom to it, so, so where other other baits, you know, they fall much more head first. There's kind of more of a uh, horizontal fall on the eel, and I think that's a lot of the key to it. And um, it's kind of got a big fat head, and then it's got a tail that runs the length of the body coming from the head of the bait all the way to the end. And that tail is like no other. It's just got a ton of action. It has a ripple effect in the water. I think that was really key for me and Sonny this last weekend on the figure eight is just a lot that bait can appear because we had a lot of fish coming in real low and low like they do in the wintertime. And, a lot of times when they're like that, that's not going to convert into a catch. But they would come in low and slow. But when they would see that eel make that first turn, I could tell her, you know, they'd start kicking their tails. Their body language would change. And the more more aggressive eights we gave the fish, the more excited they would become and more explosive they would be swiping at baits. And uh, we were able to have a really great day Sunday. Uh we had nine eats and six catches. Wow. Uh, everything was on eels. Um, I yeah, I remember had, I was, and it seemed like it was later in the day because I was texting with you. And uh, yeah. la- the one time I talked, the la- <laughs> last time I talked to you, you said, well, we can't keep them hooked. And, and then at the end of the day, I shot you one. He said, yeah, we got six. So apparently you <laughs> found a nest. Yeah, they, uh, well, you know, we didn't get to get out a lot in January. We spent the first two weeks in Florida, and then uh, we had those real cold temps in the middle of the month. That, you know, I 
below 32, I'm out. You know, I usually, I usually want it to be where I'm not having real freeze and line freeze. And, uh, so I, I like it, you know, at least 32 and up on the, the air temps. But, uh, so we had a little cold spell in the middle of the month. And then at the end of the month, we had the Ohio Muskie show. So January, we didn't get to get out. And, uh, then like this, this recent weather, you know, we got some warm weather and, uh, we got out there on Sunday and I think we didn't hit the water until 1030 in the morning. But we stayed till dark, and we had action all day long. It wasn't like a window. It, uh, it's all all day long. Every, you know, every half hour we had a fish up. So um, it was just one of those kind of magic days, and uh, they don't happen like that all that often. But uh, no, <laughs> <it's great. laughs> I think you know, of course, Sonny got the biggest fish. I mean, there's no. That's uh, that's par for the course. I was going to say, who caught the? Uh, who did you guys get an even split, or did somebody outfish the other one? Uh, we did have an even split. We were three and three. Nice. Um, but Sonny trumped me with uh, the biggest fish of the day. So, <laughs> well, yeah, good for not. her. <laughs> they, uh, now, so in the in the winter when you're using these soft plastics, how are you? Uh, how are you guys fishing them? Just a real slow pump. Um, I'm putting that bait out there and I move my rod tip maybe only six to eight inches per pull, small pulls, and maybe even less than that. Just, just real small pulls, keeping it down in the kind of the middle of the water column. You know, I think I got an advantage over gliders because, you know, those fish aren't always willing to come up real high and eat. Sure. Especially in that water tip. Yeah, they don't. They're not going to come up super high some days. So by keeping the bait down, you know, a good foot or two foot below where you normally would come in with a glass. I feel like I'm getting the cup off the bottom, uh, which is normally where they're laying when it's 40 degree water. Um, so just real slow pumps, nothing, nothing special, just very small pools, feeling a lot of drag on the bait. You know, those eels create a lot of drag. Um, and uh, keep in contact with it. And then as it comes up high on its own within figure eight range, you know, like I said, we had some slow follows, but the, the figure eight was the key on Sunday, uh, sticking with it because these fish, I was figure eight until I was winded. Like I couldn't <laughs> out of breath. And uh, actually the first fish that I ended up hooking up with I had figure eighted him so long, I really had nothing to lose. I pushed the button and let the bait drop. And in that clear water, I watched him eat it. And then I reeled down and tried to pull him pretty hard and drive those hooks in there. But I just went ahead and dropped the bait because I had really nothing to lose. Like I'd figure eighted till I was out of gas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that's one thing cool. I know in the, in this clear, <coughs> In uh, in some of the streams and, and rivers in the winter when they get that uh, clear green color to them, mm-hmm. uh, uh, how amazing and how, well, actually how gullible some of these fish are on the eight. Um, yeah. If you work them hard enough and, and do that, even on like, uh, even on like glide baits and stuff, um, yeah. I've seen them eat and it, uh, it always, <laughs> uh, it always is kind of something uh, different when you can watch them do, uh, do all that kind of stuff. But, well, that'll be cool, man. No, I'm looking forward to hearing what both you guys got to say and, uh, this weekend. And, and Tim, I got to ask you what's going on with all these Ohio walleye guys getting busted for, uh, oh, waiting man. fish. Did you see here just this week? One of the, the dude that got caught waiting fish, one of them <laughs> got busted for counterfeiting hundreds at the bowling alley. Yeah, they they had that on the uh, local news here tonight. Uh, yeah, they were uh, trying to pass hundred dollar bill, fake hundred dollar bills. Yeah, I read. And, a, I was uh, reading the paper, the, reading the uh, thing here. It says video surveillance from January yeah. twenty. This shows a hundred dollar bill with for motion picture purposes only, not legal yeah. tender. <laughs> uh, he gave it to him at the bowling alley, and they gave him change. Yeah. Yep. 
I mean, I don't yep. know who's more dumb, them or the bowling alley. Yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah, and his, his son cashed one in, and uh, uh, the son said a friend of his gave it to him, and then here they got on the text things and found out that his dad gave it to him. So, his uh, uh, oh I, 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 old pop ain't the uh, ain't the brightest. Uh, I no. can't, I, I, you know, I still am kind of waiting to see what uh, uh, what's going to happen to those two guys. Um, <laughs> I can't believe, uh, but yeah, I, I, I looked at that and I was, <laughs> I can't believe old boy tried to pull something else. Yeah, really. And, uh, when they got caught, they, uh, went to court, they pleaded not guilty. <laughs> well, of course not. <laughs> with the, with the lead roll on the, on the ground. Exactly. <laughs> and then I just loved it in that video. That guy, I mean, he, he didn't do anything. He just stood there and I, know. I was, I was waiting for fists to start flying. Uh, I am I am disappointed that there wasn't fist flying, well, to I, tell you the truth. Well, I guarantee you, if that happened at Eastern Kentucky in a bass tournament, there would be <laughs> there would be bloodshed. I, well, I guarantee I, it. I guarantee <laughs> you that would be going on. Uh, the only thing I've ever seen <coughs> happen down here in a bass tournament was this one fella around here. He was, because there was a slot limit, you could keep like, you could you could weigh like under 13 and over 16. Yeah. And the guy was cutting the tails on uh, right. on like 13 and a quarter and stuff like that. And they were wondering why all the tails were bloody. Well, he was cutting the tails on them to make them uh, to make them to where he could weigh them. Uh, oh, geez. But uh, yeah, that uh, I could definitely uh, I could definitely see if if somebody had weighed in them down here, that would have oh boy, yeah, that yeah. would have not been uh, that would have not been too pretty, but. Well, guys, I'm gonna let you go. We talked. Uh, we had some okay. good talks here tonight, and uh, we will see you guys. And hopefully, everyone listening to this, we're gonna be at the uh, American Legion in Wilmington, Ohio. It's post forty nine. You can go to Musky with a Y, MuskyRoadRules dot com. You can either sign up there, or you can just come pay at the door. We love people to pay at the door with cash, uh, and you know, either way, we're gonna. It's gonna be me there. I'm gonna be talking a little bit. Jason's gonna be talking. Tim's gonna be talking. We're gonna have door prizes. We're gonna have raffles. We're gonna have some good deals on some rods and nets uh, at the event. Maybe even a few lures. So, uh, guys, hope to see you there this weekend. Again, we start at 10 a.m. Uh, it's forty-five dollars to get in. Women and children are free. And uh, we're going to go from 10 to 4 in the afternoon. So, guys, thanks for coming on here tonight, and we will see you on Saturday. Sounds good. All, All right. right. See you. See you. Bye. Bye.